I'd like to talk to you about the gangster rap controversy, if I may. I'm not a gangster rapper. Sir, there's been a lot of controversy here concerning gangster rap. May we talk to you about it for a moment? Mr. Shakur, with all due respect, you've been charged with shooting two off-duty police officers. There's a sexual assault charge against you, sir. Do you worry about the message this might send out to the people who buy your music? No, my people that buy my music should understand that we have a wonderful judicial system in this country, and it works. And I have to go through the system just like everybody else. I've only been charged. I've not been convicted of any crime, so I think my supporters and people know. You got here, man. What other pictures? What other pictures, baby? I didn't delete no other pictures. What other pictures you talking about? So. Haitian Jack was like the black Kaiser Sosi for a long time. Did he exist? Was he just a name that Tupac said in a song as a stand-in for somebody else? Well, Haitian Jack, as we all know now, is very real. And it's amazing that Gully TV was able to go down to Dominican Republic and get, I guess, the first exclusive interview with him since he's been there. Um, Haitian Jack is somebody that came out of the early, early 80s in New York, um, supposedly was a extortion artist, um, somebody well known to police who moved in the highest of criminal circles. Um, when Biggie and Tupac were launching their careers, Haitian Jack was already a well known figure in the nightclubs and on the streets of New York. He dated Madonna. Um, and, you know, he was really uh, kind of a secret and important part of the mid to late 90s in the hip-hop world. Who knows what business dealings he had with who. I think that Jimmy Henchman was a friend of his, and of course, Jimmy Henchman and, and Haitian Jack are at the center of most of the rumors and innuendo and even actual accusations from supposed confessed shooters who are now in federal prison in the shooting of Tupac Shakur at the Quad City Studios. Um, Haitian Jack is a man that knows many secrets and he's probably never going to tell them. And Haitian Jack is also somebody that I'm sure even from Santa Domingo, Dominican Republic, can reach out and touch people here in the United States right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a reappearance on American soil sometime soon. As to the question, is he a quote-unquote snitch? What does that even mean these days? I don't know. He certainly is a uh, brilliant tactician because for somebody who's been uh, accused of so many things, he escaped relatively unscathed and there's no real paperwork showing he's, he's a snitch, but that doesn't mean he's not, but who knows? So Haitian Jack, a true enigma, somebody very important to uh, the time period when hip hop went from being a big deal to being very central to the cultural landscape and integral to the economy of the music business in the United States. Shout out to Gully TV for getting the interview. This was brought to you by American Dope, americandope.com. You can get this jacket online, americandope.com, our profit. Five minutes on this stuff, it's all good. Okay. So I, we can record and tell them. I want, I want that, man. We on Gully TV right now, Ross. Ricky Ross says. Shout out to Gully TV. You already know, man. It's the boss. Ricky Ross safe. My nigga. Ha. 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 Rose, talk to me, baby. This is my nigga, Jamil. This is Gully TV right here, Rose.
Huh? This is the spot you eat, at, you eat here often? No, nah, this is this is on the way to where we're going. Otherwise, I don't come here. Okay. So you can just pull up at a random spot and the food going to be good over here. Yeah. 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 Aguacate. Pequeño. Con eso, no, lo mismo. Con el mismo. Right. That's right. As soon as you came down here, that shit right going to hell. But guess what? They had a different respect for you now, though. Definitely. I was thinking about that this morning. Chicago, my nigga, my, my OG gangster disciple called me last night. Okay. He told me niggas in Chicago still think I'm a myth. Yeah, it was like that. That that type of aura was around you, bro. Yo, they don't make a myth out of a motherfucker unless he's a giant. Okay. That means the shit that we hear about this nigga is just too unbelievable. Hey, he can't be real. You feel me? Right. That's, that's the definition of a myth, my nigga. That was like, you know, that was the tip of the iceberg um, for a lot of us. But this song has grown in significance and allegorical meaning over the last 25 years. And I'm thinking that it's probably the number one hip hop diss, diss track of all time. The song, I listened to the song. that uh, there was a, a being in the hip hop industry in the 90s who pretty much did what he want, uncontested. Um, he said what he want, he did what he want. A lot of people befriended him. A lot of women thought that he was spectacular. Um, reputation Brooklyn stick up boy, but if you ask him that yourself, he'll admit to it. Same thing he told Ice T and Soledad O'Brien. He said, I I rob drug dealers. That's what he said he does. So essentially it isn't a myth, it's the truth. And um I spent four days extracting the truth. Huh. 
how did you actually um how did you actually meet Pac? I met Pac at uh at this club. Uh, they were throwing a birthday party for me. Okay. And my nigga G George, a comedian from Harlem, brought him brought him to my table. He said he wanted to, he told G George, who that nigga with all the champagne over there and all the women? G George, that's my nigga Jack. He said, yeah, man, you wanna you wanna meet him? He said, yeah, so he started to walk with G George. No, 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 no. I gotta go tell him first, homie. Then you, right. then you come see. Him. That's what me and Benny shot. By this pool over here. No, don't listen to me. Who put y'all together, you and Benny? Why, who, whose idea was uh, it for you to work with Benny? It was, it was, it was kind of accidental, to be honest with you, because I called Benny trying to get my money from this Tupac picture, and then, but I knew Benny from L.A. from back in the days, you know? Mm -hmm. But when I called him, you know, he was always good to me, you know what I mean? So once he helped me get to the LT Hut and to get my money, me and him just start reconnecting, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I just felt like he got a raw deal on the Tupac movie. Cause they gave him such a short time. They gave like him two weeks to prep for that movie, dog. Right. And so and he I, could he could have did better. Um, to be honest with you, I saw the movie and I didn't see nothing wrong with it. I okay. heard people talking about it, but when I saw it, I didn't see what he did wrong, especially with the time he had to work with. You feel me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get in the back, man. The back got a bunch of back. George, George. City. It's your boy Haitian Jack out in the DR. Let you see what it look like, man. No more need to hide. This ain't a third world country, right? It's all beautiful. It's all beautiful. My nigga, big scoots. I love you, boy.
Larry. He's like, what's up, Jack? I said, you all right? He said, nah, man, the police putting glass in my food. It was putting glass in his hamburgers, my nigga. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and stomping a nigga out. Oh, they was whooping him? Yeah, they was fucking Larry up, my nigga. Fucking Larry up. What year you was uh, on the island with him? 86. After the riot. After the riot, we set that shit off in C95. That's why if I ever go, I mean, I'm never going back to Rikers Island ever in my life, but... They'll never put me in C95 or any other building except HDL. They got that shit on record. He's never allowed in this building. Right. Like I want to be in their building. What does HDM stand for? Housing for Dangerous Men. Mm. And, that, and that's what's in that motherfucker playbook. Nobody playing at HDM. You better come with it. You gonna contest it. We had a uh, previous conversation about the real 50 Cent. You see that he had a documentary out, produced and directed by Jimmy Henchman, where he was portrayed to be like a bloodthirsty stick-up kid that did what he wanted in Brooklyn. Man, listen. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. That nigga ain't, that nigga ain't never saw for more than five or $10,000 on the stick-up. I don't know what the fuck they talking about. What he did do, when he did rob something with, with one of his homies, he turned around and robbed his homies up. Tried to set his homies up to get robbed. And he found out his own friends killed him. So that's what happens to all filthy niggas, man. Sooner or later, man. I got no fucking props or respect for that nigga. Right. Maybe he's gonna rock his out and beating the shit out of him downstairs. And uh, too, every, everybody, too little to defend himself. Yeah, very real skinny. So I was upstairs, so that's when I, right before I set off the riot, I was upstairs in our four top, and he was in the lowers. And niggas was like, yo, man, you know, the niggas beating 50, uh, 50 up. And I said, yeah, you know, I paid no mind. And then uh, two girls came to see me, you know? One of them was fucking with them at the time. I ain't gonna call their names, my own girls. And it's like, Jack, you look out for them. I said, I can't do that. I can't attach my name to that kind of shit. I don't fuck with any nigga that turn around and flip on his homies. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
You ain't got no moral compass, nigga. I don't fuck with you. So more than likely, a lot of a lot of his problems on the island stem from shit that, that the little nigga did on the street. Yeah, he, so you know he's getting his just due. Get your just due, handle it, my nigga. Right. You feel me? You do dirt, dirt come right back at you, my nigga. This world is round for a reason, playboy. What goes around comes around. You know what I mean? If I was living foul, my nigga, I wouldn't be here. All this shit they put on the internet, 99% lies. If I was a fucked up nigga, hey, knowing the niggas I was running with, if you knew the niggas I was running with, if I was a fucked up nigga, niggas would have aired me out, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? The reason I'm still here, my niggas, because my niggas love me, homie. Fuck with me if you want to, them niggas that tear your goddamn ass up. You and your proof. No. I don't live foul, nigga. Make sure my niggas are alright. One thing I don't do, I don't rob my friends or kill my friends. We got a problem, we go our separate ways. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas feel like they gotta kill their friends. To prove what? You know this nigga's mother, his sister, or his kids, and then you still kill him. You're a piece of shit. You know? There ain't nothing two friends can't work out. You know, you just it just might take some time to be worked out. But it can be worked out. I don't kill none of my friends. Right. All rob. Right. get a story I won't give to protect the innocent and to protect the guilty. It was in a setup. You sound like a setup, bitch. Flat out. 
It was a setup, bitch. Like I said before, her and her should Jack. Like Patient man. Jack, now call him Herschel, because he was yeah, snitching and running and shit. You know? All you rap niggas out there, all you boss niggas out there. You a gangster, you killer niggas, but you also snitching too, boy. That's a deadly combination. A killer, a snitch, that's a deadly combination in the hood. Leave that motherfucker alone. <laughs>
I'll definitely adjust it for you, my nigga. You understand? Don't come at me with no gangster shit. Oh, yeah, Jack, I, I, yeah, such and such. You know, Rob, Rob from 303 and, and, and Zeke from 101. You know what I'm saying? Put your real name up there, nigga, and your phone number. Yeah, I just, you, you call yourself a tough guy talking about you want to see me. Cut it out, little nigga. Man, I've, been, I've been knocking niggas down since 1977, nigga. You wasn't even born, little nigga. You know what I'm saying? Bow down to a nigga that's greater than you, little nigga. All right? You ain't ready for me and what I got coming for you. You don't want to see none of my niggas in the playboy. But this ain't the message I want to send. But I'm getting tired of you motherfuckers talking about this. This shit ain't got no motherfucking paperwork. 1996, Pac, been dead. It's 2018. When you gonna show the paperwork, my nigga? When you gonna show it? Where is it at? And, uh, and, and besides that, put it, did I put in jail? My whole motherfucking life, right? Who? Not one nigga that's come on the internet and even lied and said Jack put me in jail. Don't make up no paperwork now and don't go find nobody to lie because he had 22 motherfucking years to do it. All right? Go to his lawyers and get the paperwork or go get the court transcript. Public knowledge, my nigga. You feel me? My thing is this, man. Until y'all get some proof, just do me a favor and shut the fuck up. Fade the black, Jamel. Pennsylvania, internationally known as the Dribble on Gully TV. Started Gully TV in like 2004, you know, coming out of the penitentiary. Uh, initially, I was an author, I was writing books, I had a publishing deal with Triple Crown Publishing. Um, after that book, you know, the book craze or whatever, after that shit burned out, I needed to find something else to do. I uh, tried to sell Gully TV to Pilot for Gully TV to Vicky Stringer from Triple Crown Publishing, but she, she wasn't too much trying to hear it. So I ended up going out on my own. And um, ultimately, I was trying to make a DVD. One DVD. I wanted to make a nice hip hop DVD. I never thought about having volumes or none of that. I just wanted to put out a DVD. And um, one door led to, you know, the next, and before I knew it, I was, like, consumed by the whole hip-hop community, mainly, um, in Harlem and shit, I made my name in Harlem, up, uh, uptown, uh, Head Ice, the Diplomats, um, 40 Cal, Uncasa, J.R. Ryder, Joel Santana, I really caught fire, you know, fucking with the dip set. Shout out, shout out to Sin City. I, I caught fire fucking with them. And um, everybody was, you know, kind of like graduating to the next stage. Arliss Michaels, who was a DVD guy like me, he, he's, he has the professional chiller now. That's a, a web series. French Montana, he ended, up, he ended up being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? What's up, my nigga? So, uh uh. I knew that's what you wanted to talk about. <laughs> we play tomorrow at three. Come check us out. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, one door led to the next, and you know everybody was like, kind of like going to the next level, and there was nothing else for Gully TV to do but try to compete. Um, I had too much time and money invested into my brand, so I didn't want to give it up. I just kept going. Um, the, the gangster um, you know, genre of documentary pieces that I'm known for, that shit just fell in my lap. It was something that I ended up being good at. I look at them as, you know, like visual book reports. I was always good at doing book reports in school, and that's what, you know, a lot of these pieces that I be doing are 
essentially book reports. Um, Haitian Jack was an interesting character, an interesting, I don't know, rumor. Um, I tried to read as much as possible about him online. That's something that I do. I, um, I'm a connoisseur of, you know, urban history and shit like that. And I couldn't really find a lot on him. And it, that interested me more. So I ventured out and started to, you know, ask people about him. And, um, late 2000, early, early 2017, I moved to California and I was rocking this t-shirt. I had a t-shirt made that said, I want to interview Haitian Jack. I ended up, um, while I was out there, I interviewed yep. I was in the Loonies and I was rocking the Haitian Jack t-shirt. So I was in a company of some high profile people with this t-shirt on and it made it back to Benny Boom, the, 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 the movie director. Um, at, at this time, Benny was working with Jack. The movie All Eyes on Me had just recently been released and Benny was in touch with Jack because of that. Um, they agreed that they was gonna, you know, probably put out, you know, Pac had his all eyes on me shit, and there was a character in there named Nigel. Jack wanted his whole movie. That's just how he give it up. He don't, ain't no, cut no corners with him. But anyway, Benny Boom told him about me. From that point on, he started checking me out. This is how he give it up. This is how he tell it to me. He started, um, checking me out, just checking me out and shit, and he liked my style. That's it. I was just, I was selected and chosen, you know, blessed with the opportunity to um, fly, to, fly to the Dominican Republic and ask him some questions and shit. Um, again, the whole play, I have to attribute it to him. It was his decision. He found me. He was in a whole other country and he spotted me. So um, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, Lastly, I just have to say this. There's a, uh, I don't know, a reputation surrounding Haitian Jack where they try to, you know, they try to place the snitch thing on him. I want everybody to know, you know, y'all watching, y'all listening to this. I'm going to profile the snitch niggas. I'm not saying Haitian Jack is snitch, but I'm just saying I'm going to profile who I want. I'm going to talk to, if, I, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm going to interview Alpo Martinez and shit. You dig what I'm saying? I'm not in the streets. I spent, I was in the streets for 20 some years and shit. I'm not a criminal. I don't have no co-defendants. Anything that these niggas did, they didn't did it way before my time. A lot of these guys I profile, they old enough to be my father. Um, I'm not getting mixed up into that shit. You know, people be saying real niggas this, real niggas that. I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a real nigga. I'm a film director, you know what I mean? I'm a journalist. I'm not a real nigga, you know what I mean? That's y'all, that's something that y'all can't come up with. Y'all came up with the, you know, the real nigga title. Y'all say all the real niggas dead or in jail. I ain't going to neither one of them places, so I don't qualify to be a real nigga. Um, shout out to Haitian Jack. Um, it is what it is, man. Sure, she misspelled Haitian, but this is the shirt. I got my point across. Everything worked out. You know, they say if you um if you want something, you gotta like put it in the atmosphere. Uh, Gully, Gully has made a name for himself and his his name been ringing bells in these streets for a long time. To be somebody like Gully, to run up in certain hoods, you gotta be, you have to have a certain status, you gotta have a certain aura, it's about how you carry yourself. We already know the stories, the, the stories, that, prime example, Haitian Jet, like, we all heard the stories, but who got next to him? Nobody really got next to son, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so the day that we did the shoot, it was, it was all about Gully and, and you know, 
what he had going on and, and you know, just me, him finally being able to be behind the lens and saying, yo, this is who I am, this is how I started. And then I just really asked him, like, yo, you know, if if you could interview anybody, who would you interview? And without a without without a thought, like he didn't have to sit and simmer with it and say, hmm, like without a thought, he said, I want to interview Haitian Jack. And that was that. Haitian Jack. Haitian Jack, Haitian motherfucking Jack. I would love to interview Haitian Jack. Haitian Jack has a big um, cloud of mystique around him. If you know the, the story behind him, he's a Brooklyn gangster. What would I ask Haitian Jack? I wouldn't ask Haitian Jack about Tupac or nothing like that. I would ask Haitian Jack about other gangsters, other, ga other guys that he ran with in the street. I would ask him about King Tut. I would ask him about Scooter Bowling. I would ask him about, you know, Demencio. Brooklyn is rich and has rich heritage when it comes to street gangsters. And Haitian Jack is like the hip hop boogeyman. A lot of people scared to say that. I, nigga, I just want to ask you a few questions, man. Do you want to get on my show? <laughs> Simple as that. But yeah, Haitian Jack will be my ideal dream interview. I'll walk through glass to interview Haitian Jack. Word. You call this the Beverly Hills of the Dominican Republic? Oh, man, this the Beverly Hills. This is the Malibu. The old nine, baby. This where you go to play at? Yeah, this this where it happens, man. This is where Jay Z, Beyonce, the Clintons, uh, princes of Dubai, the Saudi, the richest man in um, Canada is, lives here. You know, all kind of money here: old money, new money, and drug money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all here, baby. <laughs> you know. Everybody want to act like they squeaky clean, you know, when everybody got their hands in that paper. Right. You know? It is what it is, baby. Look at these trees. These two rows of coconut trees, man. It's the only way to live, baby. Coconut trees? Yeah, if you can't live like this, man, you know, you might as well jump in the nearest ocean. If you live in New York, that'll be the Hudson, the dirty Hudson River. You can have that shit. Go by the house real quick, and then I'm gonna come back over and hang out by the pool area. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What do you think, Judge? You think we should have went by the pool area first? Yeah, because they the light. Yeah, we need the light. Let me swing back around. I can go I straight. Can... Go straight. What do you oh, we can go straight. Yeah. Then I'm gonna change. I'll change up and. I'm gonna go back and on and change up for the day. Been in this house for too long. Switch it up. I'm gonna switch it up, lovely team, my dude. This is why I be playing polo pony. You know? You really play polo? Yeah, I play polo pony. You know what I'm saying? One day, when you come back, we don't have time today. You know, we go to horses over there. Right? Yeah. About three of them over there is mine. The other three is my partners. And then we're gonna look at the ladies riding around. They look like they want to go play golf. You know? And that golf cart's chilling. Left. Left. And left? Yeah, but I thought we was going to the, I thought we was going to the, uh, by the, by the, by the thing. By what? Playa Minta. Oh, it's that way still. Straight? Playa Minta's that way, yeah. To the left? Yeah, that way. I don't know okay. what. Playa Minta, all that shit is over there. You sure, bro? I'm possible. Nah, man. Playa Minta's straight to the end of this road. Nah. I meant that's over there by the pool. By, oh no, that's the hotel. What's this thing you got uh, with, with the sports cars and shit? And, and, and the song Against All Odds? That was one of the adjectives that Tupac used to describe you, fast cars. Well, you know, he ain't lying about that part. He lied about everything else except that part. Okay. Uh, you know, I like fast cars, I like nice jewelry, but I don't buy it for people. I buy it for me, because that's what I like. You okay. know what I'm saying? That's the life that I'm accustomed to. So if a nigga don't like seeing me in nice cars and nice jewelry when all when he wake up in the morning, that's the same thing he wants, and he's a motherfucking hypocrite. Right. You know I mean, who don't want a nice car and nice jewelry? You feel me? You know? But I don't need it, though. You, see, you feel what I'm saying? I don't need it to get no women or, or 
or get into a club. <laughs> you know what I mean? My face is my passport to everything. What was your first foreign? My first uh, car? Foreign the car? The first foreign, yeah. Uh, I had a 733 BMW back in 84. Okay. Blue one. In 84. Yep. Man. They was going for 84,000 then. Brand new. And then after that, we got the 750, we got the big body bands. And then later on, we was on You thing. told me you was one of the first in New York City to have a Q45 Infinity. Yeah, I had two of them. I had a gray one and a black one. I just came home and I seen them. I like them. Yeah, the F was hot back then. Yeah, I bought two black and gray. You know, everybody's into Lexus. Yeah, I jumped in that Q45. Maintain it. Tell me about our surroundings. What's this? What are we doing right now? This where the rich and famous hang out at. This is a beautiful pool area. You know, this is the beach. This is where it all goes down on New Year's Eve night. You know what I mean? Oh, this be, this be lit on New Year's Eve. Oh, man. You don't want to be nowhere else. Forget Ibiza. Forget Dubai. This is where it's at. Right. Out of all the uh, countries you done visited, tell me what's at the top of your list. Which one? Is your favorite? If you can go someplace right now, exclude the U.S. That's the obvious. But what's your favorite destination? To me, it would be Italy. Italy? Yeah. Is that because of the food and the designer clothes? What's it about? It's, it's all of it. The clothes, the women, uh, the way the, the old. I'm talking about old Italy when I say Italy. Okay. Where you go into someone's house and they cook for you. Understand? But Italy has everything: clothes, shoes, cars. You name it. Okay. You know? When can um, we expect to see the project that you put together with Benny Boone? Sometime this year, hopefully before before the summer, maybe uh, around probably late April. You know? Okay. That's that's still a few months or maybe four four or five months off. Yeah. What's up with the trailers? You gonna get a get a get a general public a peek at the trailer? Yeah. We, at some point we're gonna let the tease out. Okay. Yeah. You called it a teaser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At some point. I'm just out here trying to bring y'all a little truth to some misconceptions surrounding this man's name. That's how he got here. I'm just uh, fortunate to be a part of this project. I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to be uh, elected to produce and direct this project. It'll be on your PC, on your TV, on Netflix real soon. I'm the director. I'm just thanking everybody for keeping it gully. And I'm most certainly thankful for Haitian Jack for keeping it all the way gully with me. Dominican Republic. What brand you smoke? You got a you got a favorite stogie that you like? What's the favorite one we like, Alfredo? Hey? The one that you have to join. Oh, the, the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, show him the show him that bunny. Yeah. The Playboy the Mansion? Yeah. They don't make it anymore. Oh, no doubt. He just passed away. Let yeah. me see that. I'm, I'm in this car with I'm producing right now. In the Caraguan here. No doubt. No doubt. What's the name of the company? What's the name of the company? Casa Pastora, Nicaragua. What you specialize in? What's your signature stogie? Uh, we're doing uh, different types of robustos and aceros. Petit Corona. We're going we're gonna to come out with the rings uh, now in uh, May. And we're starting exporting in the uh, Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain. Okay. No doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I think you got some admirers right here. Sure, no problem. <laughs> Don't take the picture. They sent the kids. Yeah. Afraid of the big one. Don't take the picture. <laughs> It's like, it's like with my, with my uncle, I'm going to start charging. Let's get a joint. Let's get, let's get a toast, my dude. Oh, no doubt. Good fellas. Jackpot. Jackpot. <laughs> a lot of people, the media, uh, people on the outside looking in, for some reason, they seem to have placed you, King Tut, Brian Glaze Gibbs, all together in a crew called the A-Team. Could you clear that up, man? No, I'm, I'm, I've never been part of the A-Team. You know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Tut is cool. But Tut did his thing in East New York. I did my thing in Brooklyn. I only ran the Glaze one time, and that was in, uh, in uh, HDM in Rikers Island. That was it. Right. That's all I can tell you on that. You know what I'm saying? We had a, uh, a prior conversation that, that, where you were filling me in about you knew uh, some of the original 18 members. Yeah, I spoke to the, one, of the, one of the band, one of the ringleaders, who was one of the founders, put it like that. Um, Rick Martin. Okay. If you want to get real information on the 18, I'll put you in touch with Rick Martin. You feel me? Yeah. Straight like that. Straight like that. How they managed to pair you and Tut together with this Tupac thing? Is it because both of y'all was mentioned on Against All Odds, so the general public assumed that y'all ran together? That's probably what it is, man. To be quite honest with you, man, me or Tut had nothing to do with what happened with Pac and Quad. You feel me? Right. But um, the, thing is, the craziest thing about it, man, I, the two things I'm known for all around the world is the two most things I had nothing to do with. Number one, I had nothing to do with Pac getting set up at Quad. If, 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 if it was me, I'd just tell you it was me. Okay. The statute of limitation ran out in 2001. Unattempted murder. You feel me? It's a okay. seven year thing. Uh, I don't give a fuck about what a nigga think. I tell a nigga in his face if I set Pac up because ain't nothing a bitch nigga could do about it. Right. The only thing I worry about is the law, my nigga. You feel me? Once the law can't do nothing to me, I don't give a fuck about what these niggas in the streets are saying, man. Because they can't see me, playboy. Because they had 20 fucking one years to see me before I got dipped. Ain't nobody do a motherfucker, okay? Pac had two years to talk about, you know what I'm saying? If he felt like I said it or whatnot, he didn't do it till he fucking really died and he put the song out. If you felt that way, my nigga, you should have did it from the day you got out of jail. You should have had me up on here to my nigga. You ain't do none of it. Like, boy, so you know your accusations are false. They gon' they gonna release the song when you dead. That mean you they couldn't say it when you was alive, because they knew it was alive. Right. You told me um, in a prior conversation that you feel that Suge Knight had a hand in your well, I know Suge Knight had a hand in it. Because my nigga uh, um, Zachary Ali, because Zach ain't afraid of Suge. He told me to say his name on his shit. He said, listen, now, Suge ran into me at the airport. And I told him I was going to see Asian Jack. And Suge said, yeah, tell Jack I'm the reason he's famous. And Zach said, how's that? He said, I'm the one that told Pac to disrespect him on the song. But, if, you know, you told Pac to diss me, but y'all never put the song out that Pac died. That means both of y'all niggas are scared. Because you know you released that motherfucker, you'd have to see me, homie. Yeah. You often, out of uh, a lot of the New York City gangsters that me and you have discussed, you seem to be pretty fond of Scooter Bowen. Oh, that's my man, man. That's my heart right there, playboy. You know, I'm praying every day that he come home. We working on it, you know what I'm saying? I hope I hope Lou Hobbs come home too. Right, a good guy. He, he didn't deserve what he got. He wanted to to get. Lou never hurt nobody. You feel me? Right, got a bunch of scumbag niggas on the street. That should even be. They should be honest. They shouldn't be in jail. They should be dead. But they walk around this motherfucker. The simple fact is that they never had. They never did nothing to me or, or my niggas. One thing we open, let's say one thing about my nigga, we did not fucking around with you. We not fucking around with you, my nigga. Right. Fuck up over here, my nigga. We gonna air you the fuck out. Please believe me. How did you meet Scooter? I met Scooter in Elmira, man, and I um Elmira? Yeah, Elmira Jail in 1982. He had a he had a he had a two to six, and I think at the time I had a two to four. We were young, we caught some quick little bits. I guess the time was too short, we didn't learn our lessons. Right. We ended up going back again for other bids, but other than that though, man, Scooter's a stand-up dude. I love him, man. I want him to come home and come down here and live with me. Enjoy some of this life right here, you feel what I'm saying? 
Cause do you, that, do you nigga, send do you send them guys pictures of this shit down yeah, here? Cause my nigga deserves this. When you been through what me and school have been through, we deserve this, homie. You know what I mean? This is this is our reward for going through motherfucking hell and back. You feel me? Right. During your era in Flatbush, um, to my knowledge, a lot of the West Indian community is in Flatbush. Did you ever have any run-ins with anybody from the shower posse? Yeah, at one time I got I got into it with one of them, but God bless the dead, my man Bummy Chris, a shower, and he hanged with us. And I got into it with a with a shower nigga, loved him one day. He's coming through the club, throwing shank on everybody, talking about shower, shower. I guess he thought that was funny. You know, I slapped the shit out there. You got dude. champagne on you? Yeah, and they ain't throw it on me though. But he was throwing on everybody. When he got to me, I said, hey, what the fuck you think you do, playboy? Like, he said some slick shit out of his. I slapped the shit out of him, and then my nigga stomped him out. And then, and then, uh, Bummy Chris called me the next day. He said, yo, Jack, that was my nigga from the Bronx. I said, listen, Chris, the nigga was in there throwing champagne on people, playboy. Like, I mean, it's gangsters and love people, my nigga. Yeah. How far do you think he's gonna get for somebody stepped to him? Right. Well, we squashed the whole thing because Chris is my nigga. God bless him, man. I, I wish he was here. If you'd have met him, you'd have loved him. He's a lot of fun, baby. A lot of fun. Thank God. Something about the roof, the legendary rooftop. Was the roof the rooftop was in um, the movie Beach Street, right? I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I went to the rooftop a couple of times, man. Every time we went, we, we ended up shooting that shit up. Gunplay every time. Every time, man. You know, Brooklyn niggas do not like being around Manhattan niggas, Queens niggas, Long Island niggas, Bronx niggas. They don't even like being around Brooklyn niggas. Right. So whatever that's Brooklyn niggas, right? So it's gonna be a problem. What do you say? The difference is with me is I'm not a star, I'm not a superstar struck asshole, diva ass nigga. Right. I'm a dirty nigga. So that became a rapper. I'm not a rapper that's trying to play a, 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 a hustler. I'm a hustler right. that's trying to be a rapper. Right. So at the end of the day, you know, we, we learn to be, be corporate, we learn to be business, but you have to understand what's embedded in me is street shit. And you have to know how to talk to a street nigga. You know how to have the respect. There's a thing called code, and a lot of these niggas lost their code. And you have to check their ass. Right. And I think a nigga should be happy that if a nigga bust your head or slap shit out of you real fast, you should be happy for that. Right. Because you really could get a bullet in your head, and you're not going to come back no more. You know what I'm saying? I'm like your guard. I, I slap shit out of you instead of killing you, so I allowed you to go home. Right. Right. Okay, the slapping thing, right? That's that's the, the slapping thing. That's that's my man Jack's signature and shit. I asked him about that when we was together on the island. Every story he told me when somebody got out of pocket, he slapped the shit out. Of Cause they need a box, yo. Some niggas just need a box. You didn't hear on the Flip Mode album? You want a box? <laughs> yeah, niggas need a box sometimes, yo. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never met so much niggas that. If you're so tough, you just run off his mouth, run off your mouth, run off your mouth, and you act like you Voltron or something, like it can't happen to you. Some niggas deserve to get boxed, and they should be happy to just get boxed and wake them up a little bit and make them be different next time. Right. Because a nigga could give you a, a, a bullet in your face, like for real. I watch niggas get rinsed in their face, the whole clip. He said rinsed. Yeah. Watch a nigga rinse a whole clip in a nigga face. <laughs> Till the, the, the fucking clip over like. Yeah, watch that. Because he was running his mouth. If you remember any nigga that you grew up with or whatever, you know, we all know a bunch of hustlers. We all know a bunch of killers. Really right. look back. Right. Any of the nigga that really got murdered, he was a running his mouth ass nigga. Played himself too much ass nigga. And the real nigga that did get murdered, got set up, right. he got set up both by those kind of niggas. Mm. Right. You did? True that. You from Church Ave? Dutty with Dutty, yes. Church Ave on the way, baby. That's where you met Haitian Jack? Oh, yeah, we all live in the same neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's a five block, two block, 20 block, 30 block radius, nigga, we neighbors. So you knew him when he was on the bike and shit? I knew him when, I knew him when he was not growing his waves, nigga. <laughs> he, was, he was going to middle school, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Right. And that's my man. As much as they say they were like, 
The Jack Snitch. All right, bring me the paperwork. Yeah, I ain't seen that uh, yet. Bring me paperwork. It's only been 25 Jack Snitch, years. Bring me paperwork, because all your niggas, they say you snitching. I know your paperwork, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? I read paperwork, man. You, <laughs> Jack Snitch, 25, 25 years, so that ain't, and, and nobody, no journalist, nobody, nobody got no paperwork on That's what I'm trying to say. Like, find it on my nigga. Do what he did. Gully. Okay. My nigga did what he did. He said he did what he did. He don't give a fuck. He ain't give a fuck. And I'm keeping real. I'll tell He'll every, tell you what he doing, dude. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell everybody right now. Right. That shooting they said with Pop. Right. Jack has something to do with it. Right. Never that. I tell already. Never that. I, Jack, I me tell you what Jack would have did. Jack would have seen Pop by himself and boxed him. And that would have been that. He'd have boxed Pop and that's it. My niggas already. <coughs> my, niggas, my niggas slapped the shit out of. Uh, 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 what the boy out there from Harlem? Look who won that snitch. Alpo. Oh. My nigga slap Alpo. Yeah, he tried to do that shit to my niggas. They boxed that nigga. Yeah, Dutty. And Lacey's in a, in a, in a roller rink called Lacey's, nigga. Yeah. How many gangsters know about that place? Yeah, that's the borderline of, uh, of Queens and Long Island. That's New York shit. Yeah, it's, it's like, yeah, Long Island and Queens borderline, Lacey's, it was a rink. Right. Yeah. The, sh the shower posse ever come through Church Avenue? Yeah, the shower posse all over Church Avenue like roaches. They all through there. You know what I'm saying? We knew a couple of them too. Everybody, everybody, man. You know, I just felt like the littlest nigga in that whole shit. Everybody older than me and everybody taller than me, nigga. Right. I was like a hydrant at them times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... I knew how to make the money. Right. I never stole nothing. Mm. Never short a crumb. Right. Mm. I was always on time. Mm. Right. Got locked up, didn't say nothing. Mm. Did my little time. Mm. While everybody getting 10 years, I got six months. Mm. Cause you asked me if I know and them for, for they, they held me for like five months asking me questions and six months was my sentence. Cause the five <laughs> months I was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. How you gonna ask me if I know Jack? You know I know Jack, because Jack lives two blocks away from me. So you know I know Jack. But what Jack do, I don't know. Right. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Because that's, 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 that's why my OG still call my phone up to this day. Because I've always been a thorough nigga. I stick to the script. This is the life right here, baby. What body of water is this? The Pacific. We're in uh, we're the top of the right now. With Gully TV. We swore Haitian Jack. About to give a big shout out to my nigga Supreme for the Supreme Team. I love you, homie. I know you got the will. If there's a way, I know I'm going to see you again. So we're going to walk these same beaches together, my brother. I love you, homie. Stay up. No doubt. No doubt. The, 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 the nightclub love people was that love uh, people was a, a spot that attracted people from, all the, from gangsta, the islands yeah all the gangsters from Brooklyn went to love people okay it's one of them spots where if you was getting money that's what you was in there if you was a killer killers that was getting money it was no it wasn't it wasn't too many it was really any punk inside love people okay you had, you had the shower posse would come certain nights you have niggas from Veer you have niggas from Crown Heights Ebbetsfield you have niggas from from my hood Flatbush because this club was in Flatbush. But before the club was a club, it was a it was a it was a funeral party. Okay. And I, what's ironic about it is that niggas got killed outside that club every given day, Friday, Saturday night, a nigga got murdered, and they never shut that club down. You said guys from the Veer, you're talking about Vanderveer, right? Yeah, Vanderveer. Think about Vanderveer, man, it's, it's grimy. Most niggas who come out of there are grimy and sneaky. It's you Jimmy can't... Henchman from Vanderveer. Yeah, absolutely. He's the he's, he's the absolute product of Vanderveer. Poster child? Yeah, poster child from Veer. Sneaky, no morals, you know what I mean? I don't know what to say about that piece of shit, my nigga. Be honest with you. 
He ain't even worth me even talking about, man. Say he, no he, more. he know what he is. No doubt. So you and Preem, y'all got y'all got a history. That's that's your guy from way back. Preem is love, man. Preem is a stand-up nigga, real nigga, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to his, his nephew Prince. Stand-up niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? That whole family must be something that bloodline, man. I mean, you know, Preem. I talk to him. He don't even act like he got life sentences. Right. I spoke to him last week. Uh, you you think the nigga's coming home the way he's talking to me? What was it like when y'all encountered each other in the streets? I mean, it, it was nothing but love. Prim, Prim's a real nigga, homie. I don't really know any Brooklyn nigga that ain't got no love for him. School's got mad love for him. I got mad love for him. It don't matter if no other nigga in Brooklyn ain't got no love for him, but if they fuck with him, we're going to check the situation. You feel me? No doubt. You said he was driving when you met him? Um, a nice ass white 850 Beamer, man. That shit was beautiful, dog. Like, it was some shit that I ain't never seen. That shit was exotic, dog. Like, and, um, the nigga, the nigga put me in a car. And, um, you know, I, I was a little movie and you know wow you know what i mean so i was into you know what i mean looking around and shit and i seen the fucking um new york times right. and when i i, I looked down i i, was, I seen the, the um article about tupac so i got interested in that shit and he was like yo player he was like yeah i'm in the news about shit and you don't even know about it and i was like i didn't hear it because i was still reading but I heard what he said because I remembered it. But I'm not the type of nigga that gonna say nothing about what he's saying. I know what you're saying, bro. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, that's your business. Right. You know what I mean? And I was reading because, you know, I, I, I was interested in Tupac's music. You know what I mean? I I came up, you know, with Left Eye. Left Eye had put me on and she was fucking with Tupac. I was uh, signed to Dallas Austin in 1993. Um, so it was around 1993, 94, I met Haitian Jack in the studio. He was coming through, and um, people was basically preparing me for his entrance. He was, they was like, yo, you know what I mean? Yo, be chill. Such and such this dude right now, and he's coming in. Basically, he ain't to be fucked with him. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck. Such and such, such and such. Boom. And then... Um, he came in, and I don't know what happened after that, but I know like the next day, I seen the nigga, and he invited me to come in the car, and and um, he had a white 850, you know, that shit was motherfucking a beautiful car, I sat up in that motherfucking, and um, basically, we, um, You know? But yeah, it, it was a uh, it was a eight fifty. It was an eight fifty. It was a white. Yeah, that was you know what I mean. A white eight fifty. Nigga, we got in it. We sat in it. We sat inside. We talked, nigga, and it was it. Oh. Uh, so uh, he came to Dallas Austin studio. Yeah. To visit. Yeah, that was his people. What year was this? Around 19, motherfucking 93 or some shit like that. Like 93? Yeah. What do you look like? He's a light-skinned nigga like me. You know what I mean? Short nigga. He's a nigga. You know what I mean? My family, like, you know what I mean? He's put it like that, man. He was a, he's a New York nigga. I'm from Philly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we, I, I've, I've been around this type of shit all my life. That's this is what I was reaching for for you to say like the type of person or the type yeah. of, the level of you know the le the level of alleged I don't know predatory shit you know he. Now, I don't want to talk about his problems and shit like that though. Right. What's his problems? 
whatever his problem is with pop. Nah, I ain't want to talk about too much. no shit like that. Like, I don't get involved in that. And I don't know him to say nothing bad about Jack. Because Jack ain't never did nothing bad to me. Right. I just wanted to know how you met him, though. I met that nigga them, through Dallas Austin. Okay. So how, how'd it go? Just go from the top for me. I met him. I, 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 um, I went to, um, I met him. I, he came through the studio. He came through the studio. They was preparing. Alright, when yep. they motherfucking was preparing, I basically was... When you say in, preparing, what was they, cleaning up the studio? No, nah, nigga, they was scared of them. Them niggas is scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They was scared of the motherfucker. I thought, I thought you said that they, was, that they was friends with him. They was cool with him. Scared friends, nigga. <laughs> the fuck? Okay, so they everybody was kind of like on edge. Yeah. All right. But I was like but you already in my zone. You didn't know him at I the time. I was 13. Like, what? What? I'm a 13. I'm not worried about, what are you going to do, murder a kid? Or right. some shit like that? Right. What the fuck? <laughs> you bitch ass niggas is crazy. Right. right. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Okay, okay. What? I got what I needed. Yeah. I just needed you to keep it gully, man, because yeah. we didn't talked about this before on camera. Yeah, when, I'm just when, when, when we sat down and when I told you that this was for the Haitian Jack movie, I, I, it, it seemed like you kind when I cut the camera on, you kind of braced yourself. Yeah, but, because we had situations that I felt like, you know what I mean, he was threatening me sometimes. So I met Shorty and I went up to 1990 when I came home and I went I went up to uh, Baltimore like around 91, 1991, yeah. Mm. Yeah, when I met Shorty, she said she from Baltimore and I said, you know, one of my niggas want to come out there and do some work. You know, baby, I might want to come out there, give me a number. She's like, yeah, she said, come out there, I got a place for you to stay, everything. I said, oh yeah, okay, cool. Get out there, my nigga, we're going to a hotel. Shorty give me a badass sweet, get my man and them some sweet, bring bitches for the niggas to fuck. And she treated them bitches like they were nothing. She's like, your girl, your friends want to fuck my friends right there? He said, which one they want? And I said, they want that one. He said, all right, she told them, but yo, go with them. Go in that room with them. And they just did whatever she said. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm in there blowing her back out. She's telling me, oh, I love you. Whatever you want, I get for you here. I said, I need some apartments, rent the cars, and strips. I got my crew. Brought my niggas out there, man. We start laying every goddamn thing down and said, listen, nigga, get down or lay down, baby. That's what it is here. I mean, ain't no freelancing going on, my nigga. They work for us, so you don't work. <laughs> yeah. It was vicious, my nigga. Vicious. That bitch seen us lock down the biggest strip over. We locked, we took Edmondson over, my nigga. Edmondson? Excellent. Yeah, I was thinking about the New York niggas who came through there in 1991 and took Edmondson. Man, that was us. That's a that's a block? That's a strip or a project? A no, ain't no, ain't no, it's, a, man, it's about 20 blocks. <laughs> oh my goodness. We took the whole street down from one end to the next. We went from block to block. Getting niggas the business. Right. By the time we got to the 15th or 16th block, Niggas already heard, and it was like, yeah, man, whatever y'all want, man, we cool. What y'all want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Tell nigga, you ain't selling red tops no more, nigga. Baby blue from now on. Baby. <laughs> Gully TV was shaking, B. Yo, the funniest part about this story is this some shit that he might not even remember, but I never forgot, B. Yo, we were signed to Relativity, like, 90, 98, late 98 and shit. Us in a group called Fin Fatale, we was like the last group signed to Relativity before they got bought out and shit. Fat Joe was signed there, Bone Thugs, like we was on and popping. So they had us in the studios, plus shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, we'd be in the A room and Fin Fatale be in the B room. We'd be in the B room, Fin Fatale be in the A room, shit like that, you know, the studio shit. So 
they come through one day, we there. They like your aunt. I was going by the name, man. Arrogant saying, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm Tom Gist, but same motherfucker. So we, um, they come in and like your aunt. We want you to meet our man Jack, our manager Jack. So I'm like, oh, all right, what's going on, kid? What's good? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? What's good. You dolo, you know what I'm saying? I had to watch on. Watch was fire, I could tell. You know what I'm saying? But we go in the studio, we working, you know what I'm saying? We playing joints, going back and forth, everybody talking, joking, laughing. We there for hours, kicking it. So they put a joint on that we did. Shit called 99. That shit was crazy. That shit had the studio going wild, niggas. You know what I'm saying? So the shit go off. And nigga Jack, he like, yo, that shit is fire. He like, yo, I want that song for the girls. So I'm like, word. He like, yeah. I'm like, yo, how much you want to pay for it? That's love. You know what I'm saying? He like, oh, nah. I don't want to pay for it. I just want the song for the girls. So immediately my face like, the fuck? And my man, my man stepping, he like, yo, oh, now you want that joint? That's nothing, kid. You can have that. It's love. You know what I'm saying? And my man ain't no slouch. I'm like, what the fuck going on? So you know how my man, my man hit me with the, you know how a nigga hit you with the, you know, like, like, yo, come talk to me outside. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right. So we go, like, right outside the studio. You know what I'm saying? It's like a little lounge and shit. But we ain't go far. We, like, right there, right outside the door. So I'm like, yo, my nigga, what the fuck going on? You just gonna let the nigga take our fucking song? He like, yo, you know who that is? I'm like, yeah, that's their man Jack. That's their manager Jack. He like, no, that's Haitian Jack. And I was like, Tupac Haitian Jack? And then they, like, they must have heard us on the inside of the studio because they start laughing. He was like, yeah, Tupac Haitian Jack. So I'm like, oh, shit. He was like, yo, I know it feel like some strong arm shit, but it's some strong arm shit with love. So I'm young. I'm a fucking teenager. I'm like, yo, what the fuck that mean? He like, yo, listen, give him that song. He the type of nigga that ain't going to forget that. So... Come back around, time should come, you should ever need him, he got you. And if shit get crazy, he's the nigga you want on your side, we should get crazy. So I'm like, oh, okay. So we go back in the studio, and it's like, nothing ever happened, it's love. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you got that, you understand? We go back to laughing, joking, talking, politics, you know, same shit. But I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, yo, this nigga's the real, this nigga's Kaiser Sose for real. Like, the nigga don't come across like who he is you know what i'm saying the chest ain't poking out ain't showing guns he ain't nigga just regular in the cut low but you know he is who he is you know what i'm saying so i was sitting there like damn that shit is crazy come back a week later nigga they had that song recorded mixed and mastered on everything I was like, yo, they got nigga, the notebook, the session, they got the real everything. You know what I'm saying? They got that shit done, man. And, uh, that was fucking 98. That's 20 years ago. The, the next time I saw him was on the preview for the, you know what I'm saying? On your shit for the joint. You know what I'm saying? Nigga looked the same. Brolic, cool, laid back. Same shit, man. So salute him. Salute Gully TV. Talk gets better days out now, my nigga. Holla at me, bro. Yo, well, we've came to the end of our journey for now. Um, between the beginning of this project and now, of course, my relationship with Haitian Jack changed. Um, in a nutshell, we 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 no longer too much, you know, speak or communicate. This is why. Um, Instead of Jack dealing with me in terms of, you know, just let me do my documentary thing, he wanted to pry into my personal business. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he wanted to pry into my personal business. He wanted to give opinions on my personal business. He wanted his what he said out of his mouth to affect me personally. And um, it, he had me all fucked up, like I told him. Um, we're going to have a part two. I ain't done with y'all on this, this Haitian Jack saga. I believe I gave y'all enough for now. But um, in a nutshell, I'm going I'm to save, save it for part two. So y'all make sure y'all tune in. Follow me on Instagram at TheRealGullyTV. It's more to come. The story ain't over. Prison prepared me to deal with all types of people, all types of personalities. And I was very, very highly skilled at dealing with the bully species. What I mean by that is this. 
every jail that I went to, you would encounter a guy or a group of guys who felt that their reputation was enough. You dig? They felt that their reputation preceded them to the point that everybody should buy it. Um, these guys who carry like this, I noticed that a lot of times they expect the reputation to be enough. You dig what I'm saying? They expect it to be enough. And for some niggas, it's enough to convince them. I ain't one of them niggas. Um, I made it a practice of any institution that I was in, I would always immediately identify the tough guys. The nigga who thought he was the shit. You know what I mean? The guy who everybody was following behind. It's a guy like this in every jail. I would identify this nigga because this is the nigga who had him a fucking bust. You dig? This is this cuts a lot of the red tape. Instead of, you know, having these problems with all these random different niggas, you split the motherfucker head in position. And um me and Jack us meeting, us doing this documentary together, it was like a match made in heaven. It was the the superior of um I don't know, two opposite forces so to speak. You know what I mean? But the program, the shit that he used to putting down on niggas, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. It's one thing when a nigga got a gun on you. You know what I'm saying? But when a nigga expect, uh, expect his reputation to be enough, you dealing with um, the, 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 the people who you trying to impose this shit on, you dealing with less than a man. You dealing with entertainers and rappers. You dig? I'm not a rapper and I'm not an entertainer. You dig? So, uh... You know, Jack got this personality where he's like a dictator. You know what I mean? I noticed that early on in debates or in conversation with him. You didn't want to oppose his opinion too much because it's going to get more intense as you go along. So you kind of like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's how I went. Okay, cool. Um, I learned how to deal with him. But at the same time, I never put out of my mind everything I heard about him. You dig what I'm saying? When you got... All types of people saying that this nigga's a bad person, that this nigga's a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Everybody ain't the fuck lying. So, I always held him in a certain regard. But at the same time, my in instincts to survive is very real. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I wasn't going to let him change my format. I believe, I believe he told somebody... Vibes are stronger than pictures. I'm just going to let it all hang out. I believe he told somebody that he could make me take a video down off, off my platform. I had a, a, a video that had some controversy attached to it. And he wouldn't let up off this video. He just, it, The video had nothing to do with him, but he just kept going back to this video. Talking about this video and he wanted me to remove this video. I believe he went and stepped to a group of people and told them that he could have me take this video down. That's what I believe in my heart. Because there was no other reason for him to be, you know, chiming in or having an opinion about this fucking video. But anyway, that was our differences. He wanted me to do something that I wasn't going to do. I didn't understand what the fuck was his objective in even trying to tell me to remove a video from my platform that had nothing to do with him. It had nothing to do with Tupac. He ain't, Jack ain't been in the United States in over 10 years. He don't know what the fuck is going on over here. And I'm going to run Gully TV the way I want to. So, it's going to be a part two. I ain't done. I got more for y'all. This shit is going to get realer. So, this this is what happened. This is where shit went left field. He texted me one day and he said something like, um, Jamil. I asked you to take that video down. I'm starting to have second thoughts about you. Some shit. Second thoughts about you. Some, some, some old shit like that. Like he was implying like I wanted to be down with him. Or some shit like that. Or like I didn't understand. What the fuck you mean you having second thoughts about me? Nigga. What the fuck is you talking about? I ain't showed you nothing but the utmost respect. Everything that you asked me to do. I've done, done it for you. You know what I'm saying? We took care of our business in the, in the Dominican Republic. Since I got back to the States. You know what I'm saying? I've handled, you know, different, you know, little little moves for him on, you know, on his behalf and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you having second thoughts? Who the fuck you think you talking to? 
that's how I took it, straight up. Like, you're challenging my integrity. You did you just question my? I don't even play that type of shit, especially from another man. Who the fuck is you? So that was like that. That right there. That that put a a barrier, you know, around my communication with him. I didn't want to talk to him no more. And shit. Um, I knew right then and there he had me way fucked up. Uh, it happens to me all the time because I'm a journalist and and the, you know the position that I'm in. But nah. Hell nah.